Hi and welcome, my name is Alex and in this video I want to take a look at Impact Soundworks new string sample library Tokyo Scoring Strings. Okay, so before we dive into the actual library, I just want to let you know if you're looking for in-depth library walkthroughs and tutorials, please check out the Tokyo Scoring Strings product page. You find all kinds of stuff about the articulation system, a full walkthrough, all that stuff. So make sure to check that out. And now let's get to it. So when Impact Soundworks asked me to take a look at Tokyo Scoring Strings, I couldn't say no because there is some absolutely awesome feature in that library that we are going to take a look at in a bit. But before that, let's talk about a few general points first. So chances are pretty great that you're sitting here and saying, oh my God, not another string sample library. I already own 527 of them. Why should I get this one? So point number one, you're probably suffering from gear acquisition syndrome. And if you own 527 string libraries or 528, doesn't matter, so just get it. So let's be serious for a second here. If you already own that many string libraries, the chances are pretty high that you are in the music business for a longer time or you're making music for a longer time. However, there are people out there that literally started making music right now and they are looking for some fresh products. So point number two, we all know that every sample library got their pros but also got their cons. So maybe after this video, you find out that there is some feature in this library that you specifically specifically want that can kind of like compensate some missing points from other sample libraries. So point number three, maybe you already own a bunch of string sample libraries, but they are more focused towards ensembles. Maybe they have been recorded in bigger rooms and are not that detailed as you want. And this is where Tokyo Scoring Strings comes into play because it has been recorded with a smaller section size. So it's 86443, which basically means that eight First violins have been recorded, six second violins, four violas, four cellos and uh, three double basses. And always keep in mind that smaller section sizes can reveal more detail in the sound and maybe it layers well with another existing library that you already have and therefore you're also able to create your own custom sound. And point number four, Pretty simple, maybe you love that Japanese orchestral string sound. So Koijira Moroya strings led by Koijira Moroya, the most in-demanding session ensemble in all of Japan. The exquisite playing can be heard on many of your favorite soundtracks. Okay, so now let's get into this and let me explain to you why I personally think Tokyo scoring strings besides the sound totally rocks. First of all, you got the zero latency mode here and we all got uh, different methods on how we like to record uh, strings Strings and uh, Tokyo Scoring Strings gives you all of these different methods that are suitable for everyone. So you got this zero latency mode here. Maybe you are a skilled piano player, keyboard player, and you like to record your stuff in real time doing your arrangement um, as quick as possible because you're capable of. And this is probably the mode that you want to use and then take care of all the details later on. So next up you have the standard mode. This would be the mode where you can hear some pretty cool results here. Let me just play a little bit and please be aware it's not completely correct but I set it up like this that I learned uh, the vibrato to the dynamic so when I move the mod wheel up also the vibrato goes up and it sounds like this so next up would be that you can already hear uh, when I play uh, now legato notes However, what you also have to take care of is depending on how fast you want to play. This is, I think, assigned to CC3 or 4. You just want to check the manual. But you can change it between uh, runs, slow, medium and fast. I probably should, should have mentioned runs last. So if I just set this to runs and I just play it as fast as I can. It sounds pretty cool, So, but you don't want to use runs or the fast transition legato when you play uh, uh, slower lines. It kind of works, but probably the best when it's slow. But this also needs a lot of time to kind of like process everything, because as you know, legato transitions take time uh, leading from one note to the next one. and 
unless you don't have a computer that is capable of traveling back in time and compensating these whatever 50 or 100 milliseconds it's going to be a little bit difficult and therefore you got the look ahead mode which is the third mode and i would like to demonstrate this to you right now actually one thing i should mention is uh, that there is also th this other option here just in case if you don't want to uh you know control the legato speed with some midi cc control you can activate this one and now velocity controls the speed so depending if you hit soft or depending if you hit hard uh, the, 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 the mode or the legato speed mode changes. So this gives you these two options just in case you prefer this one or the other method. Okay, so the third mode, the look ahead mode is really awesome because let's say uh, when you use string libraries, depending on the legato notes and the transitions and even what note it is, what dynamic it is, uh, there is always a little bit of a difference and not all of these samples have been um, edited equally right so sometimes there is a little bit of more space or more time a note needs to transition into the next note and so on so what is pretty cool about tokyo scoring strings is this look ahead mode and i just wrote this little tiny uh four bar piece here and uh just to let you know what is going on so first of all as we know if you have a transition time, no matter if it's legato, portamento, whatever articulation, it needs time. Therefore, you need pre-delays. However, pre-delays introduce this difficulty of just taking care, um, you know, of just putting, uh, you know, a pre-delay in here, minus delay or negative delay to just compensate this. And this can get pretty difficult when it comes to different libraries. You, you can get confused pretty quickly and all of the developers out there have their different times to how to set this so it can become quite complicated so i really love that feature here that um impact soundworks did and they have a plugin that is basically a delay compensation plugin that basically does nothing else than uh, acting as some kind of look ahead mode and what happens is when you start your playback, it takes one second until it starts working. So, but the cool thing about this is if you see my, if you see that arrangement here, let me just show you all of these notes here at once. You see that I didn't take care of anything uh, of the starting points of the MIDI overlapping of or, or anything. The only thing that I took care of is the dynamics in form of the, you know, modulation. So think about if you are someone working in the scoring editor, I, I just switch over to the scoring editor for a second here, and you can see that everything looks nicely and clean, right? So if I would have to deal with, um, you know, legato transitions, I would need overlapping notes. I would uh, have them to start a little bit early. Maybe this would be in uh, the form of the, the score editor. Maybe this would be like a 32nd or even a 16th note. So you would... Eventually, if you just work with a with a, a Sibelius or Finale, whatever uh, score program, there would be like a feature or a filter to just ignore like all these little overlaps or something. But typically, when you work in a in a digital audio workstation, as far as I know, please correct me if I'm wrong. This can be difficult because you would see all of these little transitions, and it would create create confusion here in 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 the score. So if you just also like to work in a score uh, software, and you just copy it over to Cubase Studio One or your digital audio workstation of choice, you don't need to take care of any of this. So therefore you save lots of time. So now let me just play you that little piece here and then uh, jump into what the library does automatically for us. Now let's zoom in on the first violins here and you can see that I didn't do, as I mentioned before, any overlaps, any early starting points or actually, and the library completely, I can just play this back with a click once and you hear that everything sits on time.
And also you may have heard, let me just zoom in a little more here. Uh, you may have heard that there is a repo happening at B4 to B4. So also the library takes care of this in the look ahead mode. You can pay attention to the articulation used at the side here. And now, as with every other string library too, you can head in here and just, for example, say that you want a little bit more of a portamento, portamento-ish transition and a little bit more of a tighter legato transition on, on this little run here. It's not really a run, but that uh, notes rising up. Okay, let's quickly check what is going on in the cello here. So you can also see no overlapping needed, no uh, early notes, no correction on individual notes as you have to do with uh, other string libraries. You can see that the, the rebos have been played. Uh, also, I wanted to have some more tight uh, legato transitions here on this interval. I just have like a little portamento-ish thing here again. Uh, doesn't matter if it's, if it's realistic or not. I just can get rid of this here for a second. So to be honest, I'm really picky when it comes to, uh, let's say, the flow of melodies or the flow of your range, and because this is what what makes a piece great or not, if there is a specific flow going on. And in my opinion, nothing disturbs the flow or interrupts the flow as much as these legato transitions. So now you have a library in combination with a little plugin that comes with a library that does all the work for you. So last but not least, I wanted to get into a question that I read uh, a lot. It's always about how can you make a small sized uh, string library sounding a little bit, you know, more epic or a little bit bigger. So what I did here basically is... Um, Let's dial this back a little bit here. Um, uh, put compression on this. Then I used a little bit of fresh air, which basically just boosts the high frequencies a little bit. Uh, I also have an instance of Altiverb going on. I loaded the Disney Hall just a little bit for room simulation. And additionally, I have a Seventh Heaven, Seventh Heaven Reverb on here. I picked the North Church just to have some kind of sound that is pretty uh, big. And I'm just using the tail, uh, or let's say, a uh, put it slightly in the background to have a longer tail going on. So let's first of all listen to uh, this without anything applied again. So now we dial in the compression here. And then dial in some fresh air. And put some Altiverb Disney Hall on top. And last but not least, to have some kind of more cinematic tale going on, whatever that is, <laughs> uh, uh, some uh, Seventh Heaven reverb here. Okay, so that's it from my side. If you want to take a look at all the detailed information on in-depth walkthroughs and tutorials, make sure to check the Tokyo Scoring Strings product page. There is 
tons of information on there so make sure to check it out and as always thank you so much for checking out this video if you liked it leave a thumbs up if you have any kind of comment feedback criticism or whatever just feel free to use the comment section below again thank you so much for your time thank you so much for checking out this video and see you on my next one